I am sitting with uh, the legendary uh, Ben, <laughs> ben Jealous. Uh, when I say legendary, I always go back to what folks have done that have impacted lives in a great yeah, way, and you. most certainly uh, your time as the head of uh, the NAACP. That was 2008 to 2013? Yeah. Right. yeah, 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 yeah. I was the NAACP chief to help to elect and reelect Obama and all that. Yeah, yeah and, and the, the legend that I speak about is just that, the, the impact that you had at that time on the election and re-election of uh, President Obama, which has been a game changer for us in many ways. I think that a lot of people question uh, right now the, the, craziness, that's, that the craziness that's come from Donald Trump, uh, many people like to say was uh, instigated by the, the craziness that uh, former President Obama caused mm. in that man's head. But um, <laughs> I was there the night. I was at the, uh, the, the Washington the, the Correspondence Center. Right. Uh, like a table away from Donald Trump. Okay. And it, I got to say, if I was him, I would have felt a little bit set up. I think he was a guest in one of the major media networks, maybe CNN or something. But they sat him at a table by himself. This is a crowded oh. room with an expensive ticket. And he's in the center of the room, and there's nobody else at the table. When I saw that, I was like, you know, because I, a different lifetime, I was, I was Dave Chappelle's first bodyguard. He's my, he's my god brother, and I would often play the straight man in the club, right? So he's like, look, at a certain point, I'm going to yell, you know, you know, hey, Ben, you know, I figured something out, right? right, like, right. What's that, Dave, right? And so I was like, oh, this is a comedic setup. And then Obama comes out, and Obama says, you know, you know and to... And then he describes, like, as I recall, Donald Trump's hair is like being like a dead fox. Yeah. Right? He just kind of like, you know, he's like, Remember. you know, you know, uh, the president, you know, had some revenge he needed to, right? Inflict, yeah. yeah. The and birtherism so, was, you know, yes, yes, and he was entitled, right? He was fully entitled, and yet you could just see Donald Trump's like blood boiling, right? Because he's he's a guy who has basically built a whole empire around him to project a certain image. Right. And the president of the United States. And then he says, um, well, you know, I just want to assure you, Mr. Trump, we have finally found a video of my birth. And he shows the video of Simba being born in the Lion King. Yep. And the whole house comes down. And Donald Trump, there's like smoke coming out of his ears and he storms out of the room. And I remember turning to a friend and going, this ain't the end of this. Ah. Uh, <laughs> right. Wow. And. Uh, Prophetic. Yeah, this yeah. ain't the end of this. Yeah. And it hasn't been. People, yeah. people have been saying, and, and I want to get your thoughts on this, and then we'll talk about Sierra for a minute. People have been saying that if Vice President Harris and Tim Walz win, we hold the. When they win. When I mean, increasingly, win. man, it's, it's, it's when, looking not good. With, yeah. Not if. Yeah. So when they win and we hold the, hold the Senate and flip the House, that my question for anybody that I'm talking to right now is, what are your thoughts about Trumpism? Will it go away mm. or will it be around? And if it is around, for Let's how much talk longer? about how to make it go away. Okay. Right? So... Uh, you, you, you know, you know one of the, the interesting facts of our adult lives is our nation's the most divided it's been since the eve of the Civil War. And now we have now been saying that, I don't know, 20 years, 15 years. Sure. Well, the Civil War only lasted four or five. Right. right. So far longer than the Civil War itself. We've been saying that we're more divided than we were on the eve of the Civil War. Well, well, how do you get there? Well, it's the same way that England got Brexit. Yep. It's the same way that you saw all the scapegoating in Germany in the 1930s. The working class people of the nation have been in a downward economic spiral, spiral multi-generationally. And what happens, they start to scapegoat people. Yep. People turn against each other. And so the way that you end the toxicity in the politics is you've got to create an economy that lifts all boats. Well, what is our opportunity to do that? On planet Earth right now, there's one big opportunity. It's changing the way the entire planet is powered. Yep. Right. It is EVs. It is batteries. It is solar. It is wind. And the re, you know, and the only real question is, will America lead the world economy in this century or will China? But there's no question about where it's heading. Yeah. If Wayne Gretzky was sitting here. He's like, the puck is going that away. Um, what's, what's, <laughs> it, what's his phrase? I don't go. I don't. Uh, I don't go where the puck is. I go where the puck's puck is gonna, going. Gonna, going. Right. And right. that's what China is doing. Right, China. We see fourteen thousand dollar EVs. It it costs them more than that to produce it, but they They're heavily subsidize of- the industry. What's their end game? Kill Detroit. Yep. That's why you saw President Biden put a hundred percent tariff on on Chinese EVs. We just saw it happen this year with solar panels. In the last year, the cost of solar panels coming to the United States from China down fifty percent. 
the cost of them down coming from coming yeah well wow. what's happening in america we are building the largest q cells down in dalton and cartersville georgia built uh they're about halfway done with the largest solar panel production facility in the western hemisphere only one outside of china china that will produce ingot and therefore every component from soup to nuts to build a solar panel and so the Chinese are threatened, and so they're cutting the prices, trying to drive Q cells and other manufacturers out yep. of out of business. And man, if you want to think, see our politics go in the wrong direction, let them drive Detroit out of business, like it, like China drove the American toy manufacturers and the American textile manufacturers out of business, right? Like it could it, happen. It's, it's not just the jobs that, that are, are the manufacturing jobs, as always with Detroit. It's going to be all the other, you know, dotted lines of of, of employment. And an opportunity. And so what Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, who cast the deciding vote for the Inflation Reduction Act, have done with the Inflation Reduction Act, what we have the opportunity to do with 12 years of Biden-Harris and Harris-Waltz-Harris-Waltz uh, is to have, actually have our FDR moment where we use 12 years to really build an economy that lifts all boats and sets us in the right direction. And so... You know, if you travel with me for a second, your mind down to Dalton, Georgia. I was down there at that factory, the Q-Cells factory. And first of all, you know, as a guy was born to bridge, white dad, black mom, both from, you know, uh, families from industrial parts of the country. Dad was textiles in Maine. Mom, it's, you know, it was uh, steel and, and, and glass and such in Baltimore. Um, and then, and whose families now live at the same address, the white side and the black side. We live where there used to be a factory. And since it shut down, what shot up? Despair, poverty, hopelessness, opiates, meth. Both sides of my family, as different as they are, live at the same address in very different states, like most Americans. So you go down to Dalton, Georgia, and man, the rainbow that is my family is that and more on the factory floor, right? It's like red faced white guys with long beards, you know, it's it's the brown brother with the tight fade, it's the sister who, you know, grew up not speaking English. They're all working their shoulder to shoulder, they're all enjoy each other's company, they are prideful of making things with their own hands and doing it well. And you almost miss the Crayola drawings that the children did and the watercolors. And, I, and so I was about 60, and I was like, what is this? And they say, oh, that's the submissions from the Earth Day competition last year. We had the factory workers' children draw how they view their, their parents at work. Yeah. Every one of them, to a one, drew their parents as a hero saving the planet. So then, but this is Marjorie Taylor Greene's district, I know. and if that's the future of her district, if we can heal across racial lines of division, if we can create unity amongst the children, white, black, brown of that district, about a better green future driven by the rebirth of American manufacturing, that's how you heal this nation. That's what Biden Harris did with the Inflation Reduction Act, and in eight more years, that'll be the norm in this country, and we will be beyond these this, these dark times. Will it take? We have to have both the House, I mean, both chambers of Congress to make that be the reality? Or do you think that by, indirectly by executive order, we'll be able to do that? God forbid we don't flip the House and we don't hold the Senate. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, it certainly helps. It certainly helps. With that said, recognize where the factory is, right? It's in, yeah. it's in Dalton, Georgia. We got, we got other factories in West Virginia. You know, uh, the Center for American Progress has tracked where all this economic stuff, and it's in dozens of congressional districts where the congressperson voted against the bill. Yeah. And so in the way that, like, Obamacare, you know, um, uh, there's a lot of Republicans who are not going to let you touch it. because, yeah. right? Similarly, I think folks are figuring out no, this is a really good thing. I mean, uh, for example, you know, Stacey Abrams is one of my best friends since I was 20 years old. I'm the guy who wrote the report as a third-party validator back in 2014 that know her, her strategy of deep voter registration makes sense. It will transform Georgia, right? We've been like this. And, yeah, there's one thing that a guy that I disagree on almost everything with, especially how he, he, he cheated in the election as Governor Kemp, we, <laughs> we can agree on. It's that we need more green factories in Georgia. So you're going to have a lot of Republican governors putting maximum pressure on their delegations. Uh, uh, you know, if to Harris like Waltz, that. Yeah, yeah. To, to keep this going. So that that, that was going to be my next question, and then we'll, we'll wrap this up because yeah. the the state legislatures and the and the governors' mansions, blue or red, have got to get on board with this as well. I mean, it's it seems that it, the smart thing would be let's not worry about what the federal government's going to do. That's in Marjorie Taylor Greene's district. Let's get on board across the country with green. Uh, platforms. Yes. And, and, you know, look, that's what young Republicans are saying. 25% of Republicans see themselves as environmentalists, but that's like 50% of young uh, wow. Republicans. And so that's a hopeful sign. We at Sierra Club, when I started, we had 
professional lead organizers, we call them state chapter directors in 25 states. Since I've, and that meant that we were basically in every state with a blue governor and then like a third of the states with a red governor. Okay. We've added 10 more state directors since I've been there. So we're now in 35 states. Almost well, overwhelmingly, those are red states. And the reason we're doing it is because almost 90%, according to, to the Energy Foundation, almost 90% of large scale renewable projects are headed to red states. So is it because, is it climate driven? Because I mean, let's, let's be honest, there's one, two, three, seven states that are red states that are yeah. uh, central and north. What it, what's part of it's just available land, right? Like really, yeah. Like states like Wyoming oh, and Nebraska, okay. they got a lot of space. Right. Right? They don't have that many people. Right? And opportunity, <laughs> and, and that that draws more of the opportunity for more employment. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Employment, it. but all, and for just deploying fields of solar panels and fields of wind turbines. Got right? it. Well, listen, a time is short for all of us. I appreciate you sitting down briefly. Appreciate you. Thank all you, right. Ben, for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. you. All right.